What time do you call this? Fucking brew time. <laughs> brew time. Here he comes. He's brought the frozen lager. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be brewing an American Pale Ale using some grain and some hops that we need to use. We've got so much Centennial and Amarillo, it's unbelievable. I think we've got a kilo of each currently yeah. that we need to use. Well after we've done this we'll have a little less. Maybe 850 grams left. So we're using Kvike for this brew. It's a midweek brew, spontaneous thing on it. Yeah, I'm going to be pumping up the, I'm going to be using the Ferminator and it's, I don't know, good insulation quality to try and pump that heat right up and just see what Kvike has to offer. Yeah, we're going to be doing 30, 32 degrees, something like that. Um, I need to look into it a little bit more, but well, it'll be at that sort of temperature. Grain bill. And yeah, yeah just we're, we're doing brewing a bag, so we've just got mashed in. Very simple brew, very quick and easy. Brewing a bag, no sparge, just mash, then straight into boil, then straight into fermenter. Full volume mash. Yes. That's what we call it. Mm. Yeah, so very simple, very quick brew for a school night. The only thing with Kvike that I know really is it's very nutrient hungry. Yeah. So we'll be using quite, you know, a decent amount of yeast nutrient in there. I think it's very nitrogen hungry. Yeah. Hum, hum, hum. We won't be using five teaspoons, mind. Maybe no, a teaspoon. <laughs> not like not five <laughs> teaspoons of wine yeast yeah. like we've been using. So. Um, so yeah, we'll just be using a couple of teaspoons of yeast nutrient to try and help it along its way. Fermenting hot, 30 degrees. Yeah until it's finished mm -hmm. and then dry hop maybe day five so we don't, there's studies that on day seven um if you dry hop it aids towards haze and we're not going for a hazy beer we're no, just we're going not. for a brown light brownish yeah and then we'll get them into a keg get them carbonated yeah i think we'll be doing we're serving. Uh, and you'll see a tasting at the end of this video so we've just mashed in uh we're mashing in for an hour 69 degrees we'll uh, catch you once the mash is done Welcome back. So we're at the end of the match. 60 minutes done. Fenton's just taking a sample that we can cool down. In our professional holder for <laughs> samples. And um, take a pre ball gravity off, but what did you think of that match? Pretty uneventful, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a bit, a bit better to do it. Nope, wasn't it, really? Yeah. We were just, we put the bag in, put, well, put the water in, put the bag in. We've put the salts in, we've put the grain in, we've put the lid on. And that's it. And that's it. And we've just sat around and for an hour. Yeah, we've had the normal thing, we're brewing a bag where temperature's up, then it's down. We've monitored it as best as we can. We've got ink there down here, plugged in, so yeah, we're trying to monitor it as best as we can. But Yeah, we're going to let that cool down now, and then we shall take a pre-ball gravity, which will probably be the next thing you see. Yeah, it's only a bit of a refractometer. <laughs> yeah, because uh, my hydrometer got smashed by the missus. Ta-da! So pre balls done. We're at 10.42, maybe 10.43. We're aiming for 10.41, so we're a little bit higher. So pretty pleased with that, for bringing it back. It is all good. It is all good. Now then, so we finished his mash. Um, we took the bag out. We placed it on the lid so it could drain. Then we poured that in. Now we're boiling. We've been Simple at work. It's a midweek brew, guys. We thought we'll do Biab. There's not a lot to it. Um, yeah. Something a bit different, something a bit quick. We did uh, mess up, didn't we? We uh, ordered some food. That came. Didn't realise that the thermometer for the ink bird had come out of the pot, so it was at seven degrees, so the heater was running. So it entered the boil a lot well, quicker than if any, If anything, that's kind of a bonus. Because yeah. then it's boiled in time for us to finish this food and come out. Yeah, so we're just about to chuck the ops in now. So Fenton's got his ops here in his lovely little container. Professional consistency. So what have we got? Let's show us each side. So that's 60, that's 5, that's aroma. So we'll there pull we out whatever my juggy. So it's just Amarillo and Centennial, whole leaf hops. Uh, the only thing I didn't account for is getting them out of the blooming. Oh. 
I might have to get this bit in bigger form. Yeah. If I can get a big one that just cross sections into four, that'd be sound, wouldn't it? Yeah, so it's five gram Amarillo, five gram Centennial, just for the bittering. So many leaves. Whole leaf hops again, because the hops that we have got are whole leaf form. So that'll be the rest of it. And then I've measured up Ben's dry hop charge, which is that. So that is going into there. Well, it'll be going into the fermenter once primaries coming to a close or halfway through. Yeah. We've got Ferminator heating up. 32. 32 degrees. So it's been an uneventful boil up to now. We've got 15 minutes left. Going in with half a pro flock and some cross my leaf loof yeast nutrient. It's going in with yeah, that'll do. The amount using Kavai, we want to give it a decent amount of nutrient. Cheers to the people in the comments that have suggested cross my leaf loof yeast nutrient. Cross my loof yeast nutrient. <laughs> We've Say got that some. Quickly. I know. Cross my loof yeast nutrient. But yeah. <laughs> there we go. Second compartment, ready, five minutes. Blah, 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 blah. It's like fish food. It is. <laughs> Isn't it? Mm. It's like I'm adding it to a tank. Mm. Go on, fishies. Get in there. Fish, fish. Hot bay. Hot bay. Bloody <laughs> fans, blowing, fans it. blowing it everywhere. Pack that in. Get in there. Can do with a swirl. That's it, end of boil. So we've got a hop stand going in now. It's not a whirlpool or anything, just hop stand. Basically. Knockout, flame out, hop stand, yeah. you name it. You call it what you want. It's going in. It's going in, and then we're going to start cooling. Right, everybody, we've got a bit of a bottle roulette. So Ben bottled, we've bottled a series of beers, haven't we? We did the Guinness to see how that would do in bottle. We, we, ben had an original, original, what was it, a Superdelic? Yeah. We did a Nectaron Superdelic. Supertron. Supertron. <laughs> so that looks like... Supertron. Supertron. Yeah. Yes, that's Supertron. That's Supertron. Yeah. Lovely. So what do you think about that? Huh? I can't believe how much this beer's changed from when we first tried it. Really? Before it was, we found this a few weeks after, didn't we? So initially when we tried it, it was Nectaron all the way. All the way. And then Superdelic yeah. really came Candy through. Candy Floss really came through, didn't it? That Try that. That red current, I'll swing out. That's Superdelic, isn't it? Yeah. That's the Candy Floss. It's like a Candy Floss pale, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. That's nice, isn't it? Say that was like one of our first beers together. Yeah. It's just like, them hops are ace, aren't they? That yeah. smells lovely. Just like a bubblegum. You, you can bubble taste gum. the nectar on, can't you? But the yeah. smell and the aromas are the super drunk. So, yeah, super delic. Super delic, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's lovely. It is. All right, my turn now. Right, second round of bottle roulette because Ben didn't label any of his beers. No. This is a Thiexton's, but it's not. <laughs> Was so, a Thiexton's at some point. Are we going to say what this what that, this one is? I haven't done that as good as the last one, have I? Yeah, we're using a, a proper professional bottle opener. There you go. In the form of a butter knife. He's giggling, so I don't know what it's going to be. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Pour it hard, pour it hard, like a Guinness. Whoa. Don't let it spill, you have to do 10% like we did on New Year's. What do you reckon? You've had a lot of fun so far, to be fair. So this is, we, we tried bottling this with nitrogen before we knew, understood how nitrogen worked. Um, but this was just carb drops, this was just what we had left in. Oh, was it carb drops? But yeah. we tried, I thought we tried... We did try bottling initially, you took it home for Christmas and it didn't work out, did yeah, it? Yeah, it didn't work. It was just, this was just carb drops, what was left in fermenter. Yeah. 
So I think with nitrogen, to mm. bottle it, you have to do it in a... You need a widget, don't you? Well, you need a widget from a can, but... Yeah. The actual science is, as soon as you... If you try and do carbon with nitrogen, as soon as you open that to the atmosphere, the nitrogen disperses. So if you think about it like when divers have their mixes of gas, divers go down with CO2 and nitrogen, don't they? Yeah. But as soon as they get to the surface and they get out of that, you know, water tension and whatever, that, that kind bends. of environment, yeah, they get the vents. But as soon as they come out of that into <coughs> standard pressure, not negative pressure or whatever, all the nitrogen disperses out their body, yeah. which is then causing blood clots and killing them. Yeah, yeah. So this is just CO2. That. So you've not tried one of these, I have tried one before. It's just Guinness, though, isn't it? It's Guinness, yeah, but no nitro. Yeah. And just with two carb drops in. Oh, sorry, one, one yeah. carb drop. So just get a picture of that, Ed. How old's this now? October, maybe. Is it October? Yeah, so it's 29th of Feb when we're recording this. I think we brewed this in October. It was yeah. one of our first brews together. Right. That's surprisingly good, isn't it? Love is that, yeah. The real, like, roast harshness has gone. Yeah. You know, when you tasted it, it, was, it wasn't like an ashtray, but you were like, mm -hmm. you know. That's lovely. That's a lot smoother now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So cooling's finished, we're down to about 30-ish. We're stripping out, we're emptying out. Hopefully it'll... <laughs> I don't know why you're holding up to it, we need oxygen in that. That's true. <laughs> so we're going to be using Cross My Loop Horn. Waiting for it to zoom. It is Kvike AOE East. And it's, we're using the full pack, because we made 10 litres. We've got the pail in the little bucket. Um yeah. Yeah, it's been a pretty pretty chilled out brew day. Quite enjoyed it. It's the first one we've done after work, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. We're only gonna do by Abbey if we're doing midweek. Yeah, I'm gonna so, tip the east in now as well. I mean if you compare it to Ben's head, it's about the same size really, <laughs> that up charge. And that's massive, <laughs> I can show you. Yeah, so Ben's banging it in now. Bitty bit bop. So we might be, a, I was thinking by looking at it, we might be a litre short on as liquid wise. Um, we'll smells, see how we get on. Smells mega interesting that yeast. Does that? Mm. Yeah. It smell like Norway. I've never, <laughs> never been, but I've also never used Kvike. Oh, look at that. That's clear. <laughs> smell. Yeah, it smells like, um, Yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Just filling that up. We've got some plans for Saturday, they might have changed. Yeah. Look at uh, how clear that is. Brew in a bag because it's easy. That is stunning. It is so. It, it, it's made out to be hard, but brewing at home can be very, very easy. Yeah. That's got absolute crystal, that brew has. Yeah, I'm just worried about his liquor amount, that's all. It will be all right. Right, we're going to get this transferred because I need to tilt it a little and then we'll come back to you. All right then, welcome back. So it's been a few weeks and we got the uh, beer in the glass. It looks a lot darker on camera than it actually is. It's actually a really nice colour. So Come out nicely. Ben's done a good job on the presentation. I have. We did a. We tried this last night on live stream. If uh, for those of you who weren't there, for those of you who were, you'll know what's coming. You'll know what's coming. <laughs> Chuck a comment if you're in the live stream on the comments, boys. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate everyone tuning in. It was a. It was a good night. 
feeling the effects of it this morning, I can assure you. Dehydration so. tablets, lads. If you don't <laughs> have any, get some. Because after you've had a drink, they'll just change your mornings. I've been up since seven. Yeah, and I got up about eleven. Yeah, and he's still dying now, so... <laughs> Think smart. Oh, it smells. Smells. Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. Off, off cheese. Yeah. Um, we've never really had oxidised or bad hops before. No, but I think um, this isn't clear. I mean, looking at the beer, you think, oh, it looks like a lovely, maybe a West Coast or a, a bitter, and then you smell it. Wensleydale. <laughs> <laughs> or something along the lines. I don't know. What kind of cheese would you say it smells like? I don't know. Would you say mozzarella? Mozzarella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so mozzarella vibes we're getting. Yeah. Or not it's not a cheddar, it's not No, the fromage IPA is so all fromage. Yeah. Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The we'll call restaurant. it that. We'll call it that. The fromage IPA. It's it's definitely the hops, fermentation. Nothing could have gone wrong in fermentation, I don't think. No, it's the smell of it as well. We, yeah. I, I can recognise the smell of the hops, but yeah. Because we'd never dealt with them hops before, it's kind of a learning thing for us. It's like we know what bad hops smell yeah, like, 100%. and it was our fault. So we bought them in a bin bag, yeah, <laughs> and then we cheap. didn't have a freezer to store all these hops in. So, and I'm guessing they've been open for a while, and yeah, we haven't paid much for them anyway, no, so they can just get slung. Hops. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's a real shame because this was Ben's first beer, and it's turned out quality. And if if them Hops, the Amarillo and Centennial we used were good. I think would have been sound, but mm. yeah, yeah, it just smells like a cheese sandwich, really. <laughs> Should we try it? <laughs> Do you want to try it? Go on then. Three, two, one. Nah, nah, put that on there. It's a definite no. I think we will re-brew this, it's, it's that bad, That's it's grim. disgusting. We will re-brew it, we probably won't do video for it, but we'll get some T90 pellets for that because I reckon that is that would be a cracking beer if it was with good hops. It's disgusting. Uh, yeah, that's rough as. Yeah. That's terrible. It's um, almost like a cheese string after oh, taste. Oh, uh, cur uh, curdling in my mouth yeah. as we speak. So yeah, unfortunately, that's a chucker. That is. Even after a few weeks, I don't. I think the cheesy off smell will still be there, so there's no point. No. We're just gonna get rid of it. Cut us losses again, boys. Yeah. I think there's that two in a row now. <laughs> we have much. got some good ones coming up, lads. We've got yeah. some bangers. Um, but just for now, bear with. <laughs> yeah. As I say, we will we will re-brew that with oh. proper fresh T90 pellets because I reckon that is a good recipe if it's got the right hops. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, just any hops that are okay. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> we'll leave it there. I, need, I, I desperately need another drink to get rid of the taste of that out of my mouth. But, yeah, thanks everyone for watching, tuning in again. Everyone that joined the live stream the other night, fair play. We had a right laugh, we really enjoyed it. So, hope you all had a good weekend. Have a good week ahead and then a few quid. Cheers. Be seeing you.